My name is Matthew Smith and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Plant Pathology at University of Florida. I study fungi of all kinds, but I'm really, I've been interested in truffles for a long time. And I'm the curator also of the fungal collection at University of Florida. We're raking to get fresh truffles for inoculating onto trees and perhaps for consumption too, if we have enough. Jeez. It's pretty nice. Dogs are probably the most efficient method because they use their sniffers to go right to the truffles. Um, but then when you have a group of people who can rake in a, in a habitat like this where you get big clusters fruiting all at once, it can be pretty efficient also. And it depends as well as to whether you're harvesting them for culinary use or in this case we're harvesting them to inoculate trees. So when you're inoculating trees you don't really care what they look like. They can be halfway rotten, they can be a little immature. But when you're harvesting for consumption, you really want to have um, you want to have it look nice, and you want to be ha have it be mature because then the odors and the tastes are the best. Pretty good, pretty good sized truffle there. And as I said, the ones that the dogs pick out tend to be better from a culinary perspective because they're mature, so they're giving off the odors that are what you really want. Um, you really those odors are what people like to have on their pasta. So, so it's important when you're going to sell them that you want to be selling mature ones but not rotten ones. And you don't really want immature ones because they won't have as strong of a smell. They generally fruit um, either right below the litter layer or in the top say one or two inches of soil. There aren't very many that um, fruit really deep but there are some that do that as well. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a rock oh. that looks exactly <laughs> the wrong size. That Easily kind of confused. False truffle. False truffle. Truffles in general, um, not just the genus tuber, but most truffles seem to be adapted for animal dispersal. So the animals dig them up, they consume them, the spores pass through, and then the spores are deposited in a nice little nutrient pellet, the scat of the animal. And so that works um, because there's nutrients there, so the, the roots tend to grow toward the nutrients and then they become inoculated with the truffles. It's also effective because it's long distance dispersal, so sometimes animals can travel quite far and disperse a species to a new area. For example, we know that flying squirrels, um, in general where they've been studied, eat a lot of truffles when they're available and then they may eat other foods when truffles aren't available. Um, and then there's generalists that sort of, if they come upon truffles, they'll eat, they'll eat almost anything. So hogs are an example, squirrels will eat them. But in general, it appears that things that fruit below ground are more co-evolved to animals for dispersal. So far, I would say we've probably found maybe three pounds or so, which is pretty good. We've only been here the morning. You get sort of mounds of uh, organic material and it seems like that stays moist and the soil is a little more silty. And that is the real bumper area for where we get the best truffle production.